No one, no one knows. No one, no one knows. We all woke up in the upside down, turning inside out like we've all been led astray. We've been standing on the outside and trying to find our friends like we're all just castaways. Feel like we've been missing out. So, again, your body is already a pentagram. I don't care if you think it's satanic or not. It's not because it is the um, most divine pentagram made by my creator. So that's how I see it. We always have to look at the vampire aspect of every book. And the first one, obviously, Coral was literally drinking blood. Um, but plasma is in blood. All of these... I would never tell anyone to go donate blood. I just know too much. Um, they're not saving people with your blood. They're just, in many times, drinking it or utilizing it for different purposes. You can use blood for a bunch of different magic because we have plasma. So if yeah. people are stealing our blood for this, guess what? You can do it too. You have the plasma in you. Your words come true because you are putting a spell out there. You have every element you have a pentagram you're saying i am whatever and you become that your fears become reality fiction becomes reality because we are saying it or reading it or whatever the case is right yeah <sighs> and <laughs> <laughs> plasma plasma i was sending this to alexis and i even told rick i was like i really want to watch austin powers and he was like no we just watched it like two years ago i was like oh i think we watch it and i just kept saying plasma all over um but we did watch it and it's very very interesting um the stuff mike myers puts into a comedy and yeah. people think it's silly but it's not silly he knows what he's doing um and another person who knew what they were doing is tesla and why tesla explained this free energy and why he was done away with or whatever the case is, is you don't need to put electricity in wires on a power grid with transformers, which are conductors slowing down the power. Um, you don't need that because if you have that, you would need to pay a power company. Um, you would have to be near a big city. You would have all these things go into we don't want people pulling plasma from the air. But what Tesla did is he said, yes, metal like copper wires for that the power industry is using. Yes, that does obviously conduct a electrical current, but so does plasma. And plasma is in the air and plasma in the air can conduct an electrical current if you utilize. And then he goes into the 369 and other stuff. But this is what would make free driving. This would make free house. This would make free everything. And um, even it would make time travel happen. And everyone's like, oh, poor Tesla. He spent the last 10 years <laughs> of his life thrown, you know, put away in his apartment and never seen. No, you guys, he found out time travel. He's probably here right yeah. now. Yeah. yeah. Like Definitely. he was time traveling, obviously. <laughs> One hundo. And who so. found all of his work? Mm -hmm. Uncle Tr Uncle Trump, Trump's uncle, right? Yeah, not a dad. It's always the uncles. It's always the oh. uncles. Oh, yep. um, magical mm -hmm. uncle. Okay. They are the keepers. They are the keepers and disseminators of the wisdom. It can't be the mom or the dad. Yeah. It's either the aunts, the uncles, or the grandparents, it seems. Yep. Yeah, how Tesla... Nicola, Donald Trump are all connected. So what kind of information does he have on this energy? And why were people who were a part of the Uranium One scandal so impressed on trying to get him out of office? So it yeah. all comes together. Um, CERN is going to be where a lot of this stuff comes from. They even made their own plasma. And this goes into who is funding CERN, every single military government, government's military. And then this goes into... Well, your Second Amendment allows you to create your own military and you can do everything that our military is doing. And if you don't think a Pentagon or a pentagram is utilized, well, OK, let's look at the military. OK, the military uses <laughs> pentagrams. The military uses all five elements. And if you ask me, Space Force, mm -hmm. is Trump making the plasma force? It mm -hmm. is Space is plasma. Ether is plasma. And he brought in the fifth element 
for all of us and our money is going towards it, meaning it is ours, which I think is being utilized as well. And all the other guys aren't really doing much after that point. They're all like, oh, it's it's pretty much a plasma thing now. Everything's just a plasma thing now. Exactly. <laughs> We're just watching the rest of it play out. Oh, this is funny. Oh, how they're so lucky. No one was in the part of the Pentagon that was hit on 9-11. They're so lucky that just no one happened to be in that area. The same way that none of the CEOs for the World Trade Centers happened to be at work on the day of 9-11. They're just so lucky. So what part of the building do you think that was that elemental mix? Because each of those five corners would be like an element and then the the space between them would be the mix between the two. So I want to know like what two corners did they blast the between? It would have been between, let's see the two bottom. Like where's their front door? Yeah, exactly. Metal and water. It was, it would have happened right there. So that's definitely plasma. And when I see metal, I think of plasma. So it was yeah. a mixture of plasma and water. And obviously fire was broke I'm it sure up. Happen. <laughs> yeah. So very, very mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. Oh, this is more into Wolf Spain. So I can get over my plasma talk. That is plasma. That is how time travel can happen in the Harry Potter universe and also in real life. Now we're going more into huh, just the basic Harry Potter. And um, this goes into we find out that Ron and his family got a trip to Egypt. Hermione got a cat. Hermione's cat tried to kill Ron's rat a million times and they never would allow that to happen but i would love to see a spinoff of crookshanks eating peter pettigrew and what would have happened <laughs> yes oh, that would be great exactly um and then we start to see that uh mug shot of this guy around and they're making him seem horrible and the cool thing about because i did just read the harry potter book on this um even uncle vernon knows like they're watching the news at right. the muggle house and they're like, Hey, this serious black guy, he's on the loose. And uncle Vernon's like, Oh my God, look at his hair. Where is he even on the loose from? They don't, they're not telling us like what state or, you know, like what part of the nation he's even on the loose. Like, where's he from? So even these dark Lords that are putting out, um, <sighs> wanted posters, they're even showing muggles. Like they're getting everyone involved. Um, right. And it's very, very interesting. And then it's interesting, too, because they talk about Ron got a sneak scope while in Egypt. And um, it started going off at the table like someone was sneaking. There is um, mischief happening. And, of course, they all thought it was because Fred and George were playing a trick on one of the brothers. But, no, I think the sneak scope was going off because it was trying to tell him that Peter Pettigrew was the rat. Little rat. Oh, yeah. common house rat. He's like, how long has he been alive? 12 years, a little long for the common house rat, don't you think? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's not, there are magical rats out there. Um, and Aww. he was like, no, it's not a magical rat. So, like, why is your rat still alive? And <laughs> very interesting. It's so. a person. <laughs> it's a dude. That's so funny. So, welcome to my office. It's a girl going to the bathroom looking at her phone. Um, oh my God, that's amazing. <laughs> yes. And that's it was going to be uh, Master Jeff's cacao video that I showed you guys earlier. But basically, um, when you're expelling these dementors, and if you can just like look at cacao or drink cacao beforehand, you'll literally get rid of the dementors from your body. So, everyone should try it. And um, we get back on the train to go to Hogwarts shortly you after. Send that to me. Lexi, you need to send that to me, that slide. I uh, <laughs> welcome to my office, because you know how <laughs> real that is. Like, come on. Come on. You know, I'm literally a detoxer. Like, it, um, in my <laughs> Telegram group, I will voice to text messages and it's echoey like you know my ass is in the bathroom well i'm certain you voice to text sometimes i read what you're saying and i'm like that was a voice to text 100 percent. she's i'm dyslexic so i really never ever ever spell anything using the keypad i always voice to text and i'm like ah you'll get it yeah <laughs> we can do it. We'll, we'll figure it out in the we'll end figure it out <laughs> Yes, some of us other dyslexic people weren't as clever, so people have had to learn how to read our mess anyways. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Whatever. It, misspellings matter, and that's yeah. important because um, 
when you think when you know what Babel is and when you know what magic is and when you know when the Germans took over the world, they took over people don't realize Queen Catherine Catherine the Great of Russia, she was a German who took over the crown and killed the husband and they just came out with a story a whole video series on it and it, they made it seem like an accident but no a german queen came to russia took over the monarchy killed the rightful husband and then she set and during that same exact time we had queen victoria and prince albert taking over britain they're not british they're german and people had a problem with that at the time at that same time like germany was taking over the world and now we all speak this universal Germanic language called English. And that's Ooh. where gematria comes into play, real word magic. Um, and that's why your words have meaning. So it is very important to be dyslexic in a world world where the words itself are curses. So because I don't see words the way other people do, I can see past them. And I've never, I've always had to look for different ways to explain things. So me being dyslexic is like one of the biggest reasons I can see the magic. It's really weird. Nice. I get it. Yeah. Um, so we have a lot of different hybrids going on. Um, Buckbeat isn't necessarily a shapeshifter in the way that like he changes form however if you are aware of the old greek mythology and all the old myths of like avalon and atlantis you know that there were people magicians who were doing genetic testing on animals and if you look up epstein island or podesta artwork you'll see a lot of what i'm talking about here being done on modern day you'll see um half pigs half humans half like they these magicians just try to mess with our genetics and they do try to make these animals that are half something half another and it's been going on for millennia and a lot of these sources from atlantis and stuff they said that the animals were in pain when yeah they did live and it wasn't like a very good existence so um buckbeat is literally one of these beasts that was hybridized hybridized um and then you have people who choose to be animals and those are called animagus magus oh see when they say maga it's not a bad thing it's explaining an animal that can change but yeah. when Polit politicians say make America great. It's like the worst thing in the world. And oh my God, they're demon worshipers. No, Magus, Magus is a thing that we are always going to see in the Magi community. Um, and that's what they're trying to strip of us from a AIDS. So we have. Yeah. Not the AIDS. <laughs> Not the AIDS. <laughs> yeah. um, we have one of these characters being a werewolf. It's a teacher. The teacher was one of the Harry Potter's father's best friend he was bitten and he became a werewolf so on full moons um he had to go under the shrieking shrack shrieking shack to um wolf out and his friends were like really felt bad for him so they also became animals by their own right and you have uh mooney which is the werewolf and then padfoot which is Sirius black he turned into a dog prongs which is harry potter's dad he turned it into a buck uh, like a deer and yeah. then you have peter Pettigrew, who turned into a rat and um these four were best friends as kids and they two of them are still alive the two anime guy are still able to turn into a black dog and a rat um and of course professor lupin which if you know the word lupin and that is werewolf territory in itself but yeah. he's not a bad guy he's just he has a condition yes he was a nice one he was a nice one he was my favorite he i thought i always liked him the most he was my one of my favorite characters yeah they don't too. show it i guess in the movies but um when after he's no longer with us harry goes to the house of lupin and he sees that Lupin was gonna adopt Harry. He had all the adoption paperwork. Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's so heartbreaking. Um, but yeah, and I didn't really cover this in the first one, or if I did, I think I might have said the temptress and I didn't mean it. But Hermione 
is not the first time we've seen that name in literature, especially like fantastical literature. Hermione, yeah. Shakespeare um, had the Winter's Tale and Hermione was the person in the Winter's Tale. And we will cover the Winter's Tale more when they start getting rid of the Horcruxes because they actually show Shakespeare's scene of Shakespeare's Hermione um, wow. play out. So we know the scene very well, but um, we'll get more to that when it happens. Nice. Okay. Um, yeah, I was going to like change some of this, but really I just wanted to cover the simple spells that we did learn in these books. And if you girls want to help me here, mm -hmm. I know we learn about the Patronus charm. Yeah. Uh, Patronus. Before and that, ridiculous. Oh ridiculous. my God, you're so right. Ridiculous. Can you explain what ridiculous is? Yeah, before they get into Patronus work, they Lupin brings out the ridiculous spell with a bog art, which is a being that will change to look like your biggest fear. So it it, it just it's a shapeshifter again that will that will mirror your deepest fear to try and basically spook you and mess with you. So ridiculous is the spell or whatever to cast on this bog art as it's being your fear to kind of add an additional aspect that will make it look silly or not scary anymore. So that was the exercise. And each fear could be distorted with this spell to be something that was the wiz witcher wizards like thought preference, like how to humiliate this thing they fear. It was sort of the intention they had to put behind it as well. <clears throat> but then when that wasn't strong enough for Harry, they began teaching the Patronus charm, which was in general, just like this ball of light and just pushing off just the pure darkness. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so it was another step of that. So it, it didn't even have as much intention, maybe not the same intention, but it was interesting that they taught both of those techniques to kind of cast away what you're fearful of. In my yeah, opinion. Like a basic level, like a basic transmutation spell. So like, you know, the darkness, the demons, their first weapon against you is fear and intimidation for like, right. even the parasites, you know, they'll, fear. they'll possess the body or the, the being of something much larger and scarier when the truth is they're just a worm. Right. So mm -hmm. like ridiculous is one of my favorite spells. One of my favorite scenes actually in the whole series is the idea is like, you know, something is in your face and it is its whole, entire weapon against you is illusion. And so, you know, we know that this works in the real world. If something is, is terrifying you, if you laugh at it, your laughter, like a child's laughter or human laughter, it breaks up whatever kind of um, energetic matrix that constructs this illusion, this, whether it's a demon or a spirit or just stuck energy, certain things like laughter breaks it apart. And I was going to say too, you know, like we talk about Gryffindor, like the lion, actually, no, it's not the lion. Um, there's a lot of like lion symbolism. Trump symbolism is yeah. a big yeah. lion. And the, uh, yeah, I think I told you guys about this once, but I had like this dream and long story short, uh, the roar or like, we'll call it a roar or purr, like a big purr from some kind of a large predatory cat. Mm -hmm. the, the reverberation emanated from a loud purr or roar from a predatory cat breaks apart the, the, the plasmic field or the plasmic matrix that constructs these parasitic structures, whether they be um, physical parasites or the like, um, or the, the energetic like counterpart. So you have a physical parasite and then it also takes up space in the, in the unseen world. And there is something about the predatory cat sound that just makes the thing flop apart and it can't stand in front of that kind of emanation. And I always thought that, that was the, the connection between, you know, Trump's whole thing being about the lion, the return of the lion and that sort of thing, like kind of this blanket roar that maybe it doesn't destroy the parasites on contact as soon as it touches them, but it, it sort of rumbles and shakes them out of their respective uh, disguise and it, they're not able to hide because they're now totally, they're like, what is happening? You know? And so that's 
like, and that's a huge part of like real life magic is when something you emanate something, you project something and you have confidence and they cannot stand in front of, or in light of certain frequencies, certain vibrations, literally like they turn into puddles, their, their matrices fall apart. That's real life magic. That's not Harry Potter, the wizarding world. That's like real stuff 101. Like, so after this, you're going to be listening to our video of lion roars for like roar. a good eight hours. Roar. Yeah. Roar. yeah. yeah. <laughs> big, kitty, big kitty therapy for sure. <laughs> On Lion King, I think it's Whoopi Goldberg. Uh, they say, what is it? Ooh, say it again. Ah, Mufasa. Ooh, oh, say yes. it again. And the Ooh, name yeah. of Mufasa, or like just saying that, like literally shook the hyenas, and it's really interesting. And then, of course, the Lion King's crazy. I mean, it goes into Nazi and fascist takeover of a pride land, and then a it's also the Queen Mary story. The real king was killed and taken over by a fake and then it took a couple of years but Simba was the rightful king and there was a huge fight and they had to go within and turn it over again and get his pride land back and that is like ch chill chills are going up me it's just like crazy because that is what um mm -hmm. Donald Trump says he's doing now of course um two things on that we always talk about the testament of solomon whenever i go into magic i uh, watch my journey to truth episodes we go into it a lot but but the idea is um solomon king solomon went into a cave he found seven demons the demon said you can control us if you have the pentagram ring and he's like what i can control demons so the idea is if a good person has the ring to rule them all then it's no big problem demons will be kept at bay if a bad person takes over the ring it will be all hell breaks loose because now the bad person can control the demons and make them do what they want. So, um, for example, a tool is just a tool is just a tool. And if a good person has a tool, he could use that tool for good. If a bad person has the tool, he can use the tool for bad. So I always show people, and I've been having my own conspiracy on this one second here. There was a war of Trump in the 5G. There was a race to have oh, yeah. secure 5G into America that was different than the rest of the world. Right. So America does not have the same 5G as Europe, as Britain, or Asia, as Africa, all these places. We have a different 5G because of Trump. Yep. And this happened like right before 2020 kind of thing happened. Yep. And and September 2017, the executive order was penned. And then I think it went into effect like shortly thereafter. If they hadn't done it already, but I recall that executive order because I was like, holy shit. He mandated that all foreign 5G equipment, even if it was already constructed in the continental US, it all had to be dis it had to be taken apart completely mm -hmm. and sent back. He's like, take it down remove it. We don't want it here. This is an executive order. Now they did say that, uh, when what's his face took office, his fake presidency that he undid that, but I, I can't We It's hard for it's us to prove. We, we don't, don't know. know. We don't know. Oh, remember um, when stuff was falling from the sky those few years too, when they were like, Oh, there's just, Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> that was the best part was we could feel the pressure and the tension, especially 2019 when that was like, but they all, all since 2017, all that stuff, like, Oh, it might've been a satellite or whatever falling from the sky. <laughs> Very <laughs> weird. Those. I do vaguely Sorry. remember now that you're talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. And we haven't had any in the last little bit last year. I'm pretty yeah. clean. Other than the balloon, the balloon was the big one this last year, but yes. anyways, go on. Yeah. <laughs> so why I bring this up is because graphene oxide is already being used to kill parasites. Um, the way it works is it can become, it can, it can work this way. It can become a net oh and it can grab all free radicals in a water system and it can pull it out. So um, it could also do bad things, but like technically if, <laughs> It depends who's in charge. It depends what are you on grabbing? who is using. And what is 5G? I'm Penta dying. means five. Right. Gram, if you've ever bought weed or anything else, you know a big G stands <laughs> for a gram. So 5G 
is pentagram. So if you change oh. the pentagram, then you can change how the demons are being utilized. So you wow. could, in theory, make graphene oxide detox everyone. However, this is pretty dangerous and I don't like people doing it regardless. So I'd rather you do my detox because if, goodness forbid, people, if you were utilizing graphene oxide to cure people with this like magical 5g frequency it would pull everything to the bloodstream at once it would pull all your parasites to the bloodstream so if you pull your blood you'll see a bunch of parasites in it you might even have heart attacks or aneurysms because that is how much junk is being pulled to your stream this is called herxheimer reactions this is why ricky leaks does not do hardcore um cleanses because we don't want your blood to be full of toxins all at the same time we want to do it very slowly and you each system kind of cleans out itself and it will take six to nine months to do a proper cleanse um and people think you do it once and done no it's not once and done you do it full if you do it once and done you're gonna have a heart attack and aneurysm the same exact (laughs) things that people are dying from isn't that weird Mm. so once you start don't stop and yeah, exactly. do, either you, do either of you play any stringed instruments like to where you would know what a G chord is there a G chord or a G string or a G <laughs> G string So there is an illusionary aspect to magic. And what most people think is magic is like what Alexis was describing the Bogar as. It's Mm -hmm. fake. It's an illusion. It is not real magic. It is a Bogar. And there are so many people who like get faked out by Bogarts in real life. They think it's real life magic. So in WandaVision... Um, she goes, she's, she's doing a, like a fake magic act. Like, Oh, let me pull the hat, the cat, the bunny out of the hat kind of thing. And she's like, you know, I'm not using real magic in real magic acts. Everything is fake. Hello. And what's the difference between an illusionist and a magician, a mental, uh, what is the difference between what you see people like Chris Angel, maybe what he's doing versus real magicians do. And one is making illusions and one is creating matter from nothing or transmuting um, solids into liquid, like doing different things that actually involves one of the type of traits you learn at school. So if you can laugh at illusions, it will no longer have any power. So I think there's a lot of illusions out there that if you just and jenny was talking about this yesterday like just laugh at them like put them down like be a troll and you'll be able to find out which illusions with ridiculous if you call something ridiculous and you call it out for what it is and you say that's fucking fake sorry Mm -hmm. (laughs) then you'll realize that okay we're laughing at illusions we're breaking bogarts left and right this is something everyone can do Absolutely. Thank goodness. Yeah. Laughing is the key. I was just watching uh, even just a different video of a woman trying to get exercised by some guys who are in a more like intense sect of religion, but they were laughing over her and they were laughing and kind of holding her and jo- jovially laughing as like a group and these older dudes. And I was like, that I've I've seen men, I feel like do that in multiple different ways, like the groups of healing men, like the monks. And then it's, it's being uh, reused over and over, but the laughter, just, just shaking and laughter near someone and being joyful. It was what they were doing to exercise people. So it was cool. That's yeah, no, no, it's totally true. Um, It's why a lot of people break into nervous laughter when they shouldn't, because it's they're they know that they're being, targeted and if you just start laughing it'll break the target it'll break the concentration um oh. it'll bring oxygen into your blood if like that's why i'm all about making people laugh when learning about these horrible subjects because it's fear right. fear is the mind killer it ruins everything but you need to tell people stuff without them becoming fearful and you just have to make them laugh after he- hearing something really bad because they're going <gasps> and they're breathing in air there is light in air there is air in air you you're breathing in two at least two of the elements 
already right there. And most of the time people just don't, people aren't breathing. That's what I've learned this entire time. And I've had, I made zombie episodes. I tell everyone to watch my zombie episodes. No one breathes. I, if you go out in public and look around, everyone's having anxiety attacks because no one's breathing and no one has oxygen. And you know what your body starts to do when it doesn't have oxygen? It like, goes into it if an anxiety fit it's just because people are not breathing because they're all zombies so breathe easy to do that is through laughter <laughs> oh, oh, oh. keep those comedians close they are defeating yeah. the demons left right and center <laughs> and that's why they have so many demons too because they're not doing if anyone's ever met a male comedian they're usually not not assholes there's just they the way they see the world is like oh we're all dying it's whatever i'm just gonna tell you very george carlin bo burnham and it's like you guys can't see it so for me women are the ones that have to tell this story when men try to tell anything about magic men this is what men do every single time i know something you don't know you should really talk to me. I have the secret that you need to know. I'm like, bitch, I know way more than you know. I'm on so many <laughs> lists. I'm on so many military lists. I know shit that I don't even talk about. Do you think I need to join your club? I have a secret. You just don't know. You don't see. And that's what men do. Girls, we're like, yo, have you heard this? And we all listen to each other. And we we cheese men. That's what the Ooh. Spanish word for gossip. We, we talk about everything. Men don't do that. So I don't think men can really like get this information out there, which brings me back to Hecate. Okay, I'm going to play for you two Instagram videos. One is going to show how a illusion can exist in a holographic reality. And remember, in third grade biology, you learn er, <laughs> when you were 13 years old in biology, uh, most of America learned in seventh or eighth grade that every element is made out of a photon, which is vibrating light. So if our reality and every element in it is just vibrating light, that is the definition of a hologram. They told us because they, we have to know. So this is examples of how illusions can be made in a hologram. And also the next video is going to be universal law and how manifestation works. It's a little different than the new age movement talks about law of attraction. It's more along the lines of God is going to give you what you need, not what you want. And the new age move, movement is very much, oh, give me what I want and not necessarily what they need. So that's real manifestation. And in Harry Potter, he learns the Accio spell. And this is receiving something that you need that is far away. And um, it's a brief explanation. Again, not exactly how the New Age movement describes it. Called the five laws are the basic description of the structure of existence. So number one is you exist. There's nothing you can do to change that. You can change your form, but you cannot change the fact that you exist. The reason for that very stupidly simply is you can't become non-existent because by definition, non-existence doesn't exist. That's its definition to not exist. Therefore, that which does exist just exists. That's its quality and cannot become that which doesn't exist because there's no such thing as non-existence by definition. So that's number one. Number two is everything is here and now, which basically means space and time are an illusion, a projection of our consciousness. Everything actually exists all at once. It's all accessible right here. You just have to change your frequency in order to access it because that's how they're separated. They're separated by frequency. Just in the same way that TV programs are separated by frequency, even though they may all be running at the same time. Uh, number three is the one is the all, the all are the one, <clears throat> which means there is only one thing and everything that seems different is made out of that one thing because there's nothing else to make anything from. Number four is what you put out is what you get back. Sometimes people on earth translate this as the law of attraction. And <clears throat> something important to say about that, because even though it's not incorrect to say that, well, you have to be the vibration of a thing to attract it. The idea of the way it's usually stated here is, in my opinion, incomplete. And people are left thinking, I have to learn what that vibration is to attract the things that I need in life. That I disagree with. You are already giving off the vibration because that's your natural core vibration is to attract what you need in life. If those things aren't manifesting, it's not because you're not the vibration of the attraction. It's that you are blocking them from coming. You're stopping the vibration from bringing them to you with negative and fear-based beliefs. So it's not an issue of having to learn to attract. It's an issue of having to learn to stop blocking what you're attracting naturally. 
And law number five is everything changes except the laws. Those are the structure that don't change, but everything else changes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. So we have a bunch of different choices in this video in the third Harry Potter. Like for example, if Crookshanks (laughs) would have eaten Peter Pettigrew, what would have happened to Voldemort? Um, because he does have Horcruxes out there. If one of his Horcruxes doesn't work, if one of his plans to come alive again, doesn't work, he just goes on to the next one. Yeah. So, um, obviously it's good how it all played out, I think, but there were other ways. Um, when we do finally have the scene of all the kids going into the shrieking shack and they are met with Sir- Snape, Peter Pettigrew, Lupin, and Sirius Black, it's a very tense scene and Serious black and lupin wanted to kill peter pettigrew and you're like yes you should totally kill peter pettigrew like do it don't listen to the 13 year old telling you not to kill right. peter pettigrew no. yeah but everything happens for a reason he didn't he got away peter pettigrew uh the next year brings back the dark lord so that wouldn't have happened if they would have just killed him and got done with it so that was one choice that harry decided to make and he didn't kill harry potter or he didn't kill peter so he had to deal with the repercussions later on um okay since we're talking about wolves or like werewolves there Mm -hmm. is a herb that hakate loved and it is called wolf bane wolf spain but the actual name of the plant also when you say it it sounds like hakate but it has an a and it's a cotium and this is Wolfsbane. And the name Akatium just means to put an end to. So if you, the whole idea, wow. if you are a vampire, if you are a um, wolf, a werewolf, if you had this, it would put an end to that plague that you're carrying. So, um, wow. yeah, there is a Hakate herb that apparently, and they Snape does talk about Wolfsbane yeah. in the first one, which is why the entire third book Snape is making a potion for Lupin so that when he does churn, it's like not as bad or it, it's like a very, very mild version. And it has wolfsbane. It has this herb in it, basically. Wow. Wow. <clears throat> yes. Okay. What else? Uh, I got really into plasma physics. I know a lot now. <laughs> um, <laughs> ancient. Okay. It, J.K. Rowling <laughs> explains how, oh my goodness. So that symbol is a Freemasonry symbol that we all know of. And, um, you are now, when you, when you possess this, you're a master of death. Like you won't be hurt. You won't have a, any type of attack will not be done onto you, all of this stuff, but in the books, and we'll learn about it more in the next one. Um, it backfires. It doesn't backfire. Um, it, it, it keeps Harry from death, which we'll learn okay. like he, oh, so yeah, we, we can talk about that now. Um, let me get out of here. Hold on. By the way, uh, Brendan Fr- Rick O'Connell had that tattoo slapped on him when he was an orphan in Cairo. Thank That's you. I, okay. I watch those trilogies every. I'm obsessed with the mummy, and I'll never ever forget he's a, he's a magi, and he's a he's a white man, but he has no parents. You know what I mean? Who's interesting? He knew who he was. And so he's like, oh, I got that slapped on me when I was in an orphanage in Cairo. No big deal. He's like, and he said the line and he was able to finish it. And he's a protector of the pharaoh. Man, we should do a whole series on the mummy too. Yes, (laughs) we totally could. Um, I just needed to get these basic things out first, but the mummy goes, and there's a series called the librarians. The librarians, I honestly like more than Harry Potter, but it's, um, it's following older wow. people they're 33 years old and oh. they, ancient. right yes <laughs> I'm ancient now yeah. <laughs> so um librarians do cover a lot of what harry potter does and that i would like to go through but there's like seven seasons it's a lot wow. um it's really good though and it does it parallels the mummy so maybe we could do both of those kidding me. Uh, not kidding but we don't have a lot of time so questions ask them is that the spirit of destiny? Yes. Ark of the Covenant? 
Yes. Wait, what about Bigfoot and Dracula? Yes and no. Yes on Bigfoot. So vampires aren't real. Vampires are real, but Dracula is not because I killed him. Is this helping? I don't know that it is. What? Ten years ago, each of you received an envelope inviting you to apply for a position here in this library, but you never showed. But I am proud of what I am. And what is that? I am a librarian. Speaking of libraries... Apparently she's trying to smuggle you a love potion. Really? Hey! She's only interested in you because she thinks you're the chosen one. But I am the chosen one. I am the chosen one. Somebody had to do it. Somebody had to do it. I am the chosen one. Cover the fourth book. Um, and it, the fourth band. I love it. <laughs> Oh my god, that's so awful. <laughs> oh, Cedric Diggory comes back dead and they're all jamming out. <laughs> all way too long to realize there was a dead kid laying in the middle of the thing. It's just like it was like a whole even the band kept playing after the, the That's what they're saying. They just kept going on like uh stop, there's someone dead. And then he became a vampire. I was gonna say, and then um <laughs> what's the doctor on the vampires? Carlisle. Yeah, and then Carlisle finds him. You see Carlisle Found like him. dragging his body <laughs> back into the maze. Yeah, exactly. That's so funny. I need a friend. Twilight's <laughs> good series too. They cover a lot. But um, let me get out of this scene. How do I, I can't look at Kristen Wiig. I can't watch her. I can't look at her face for too long. Oh, you think she's a she? That's Wait, what's her name? Not Kristen Wiig. Uh, Stewart. Oh, Stewart. So that's Stewart. another thing. She's part of the Stewart bloodline. And what I was explaining with the Cavendish and everything it's the Cavendish and the Stewarts that, oh yeah, she plays, like, there's a lot to the Twilight, <laughs> and it was made by a Mormon. Like, I can I can go in to Twilight. I didn't know that either. Oh, okay. So, um, what was I going to say? When you guys like tarot, so this is, like, the only time tarot is ever introduced in Harry Potter, right. uh, is... Professor Trelawney. And I love that Hermione can't Hates do it. that because yeah. she is a muggle. And yeah. that is much more of a magician. Like you have it in you. You just have sight. Like, I'm sorry, I can just see it. You can't yeah. fake that. And it was the first time Hermione wasn't able to do a subject. So she's just a 13 year old girl and all pissy. But mm -hmm. like, tr what Professor Trelawney should have said to Hermione instead she says something mean and messed up like oh child you can't see yeah she, she hasn't said ag heart <laughs> she's right up. um she should have said you know what like muggles who come here they usually can't see so like it's not you it's not something that you're bad at that's like what she should have said yeah. um and Hermione <laughs> also can't ride a broomstick because she's not, she is a muggle. But there's, <laughs> right? There's things that she can't do. So it's like, um, you're definitely a muggle, but you'll end up the Ministry of Magic one day, the Minister of Magic one day. So Really? She did? So that's the seventh, the eighth book that was The Cursed oh, Child wow. is showing the multiverse of what could have happened and what does happen in the timeline we're all aware of Hermione does become the minister of magic, which is crazy because she's a muggle. Um, right. And she does, but there's another alternate universe where Hermione didn't become a minister of magic and she became Dumbledore. She became the headmaster of Hogwarts and she was like, not happy. Like she was not okay with teaching. She, <sighs> she wanted to be making the laws basically. So okay. I thought that was interesting. A little type um, a little muggle girl. She, I didn't yeah. really like her money to be honest. And there's a plot hole where they're leaving the classroom and she's like, use your inner eye to see the future. And she's like ragging. Yeah. She's making fun of it. But then she's like, Ancient runes. Now that's a subject. And it's like, you ignorant little muggle, ancient runes are also divination. 
Mm-hmm. You know, like uh, plot hole. But they're ancient. So to <laughs> her, you're learning about other people doing it when really they're not teaching how to do it. So it's so weird that yeah. she doesn't see that. Yeah, it's. I'm not a huge fan. And the fact that she told, you know, I don't know if we were recording when you said this, but she kept a journalist as a beetle in a jar. <laughs> she held a woman hostage. It's exciting. Books versus movie, Hermione Granger. Because in the movies, Hermione was like. It's sort of exciting, isn't it? Breaking the rules. Who are you and what have you done with Hermione Granger? And in the books, she was like, Oh, by the way, guys, I uh, kidnapped Rita Scooter and I put her Shut in the car. Up. No. Shut up. What? Shut up. You, oh, what? you did not. No. Oh my God. No, no way. Okay. No. Okay. Wait. Okay. Wait. There's not a woman in that jar. There is not a woman. Hermione! Why would you do that? Well, because she was writing lies about me and Harry in the paper. <laughs> Personally, I wasn't going to let that slide. She literally, she, she, that's, she's in the jar. Yeah, she's in there. Okay. Hermione, with all due respect, what the fuck? She's going to jail. I don't have enough money to bail her out of jail. Oh, no, no, no. It's fine because she's an illegal animagus. So if she snitches on me, I'll just snitch right back on her. You hear that, you stupid beetle? You write one word about me in the paper, you're going to go to wizard jail. Oh, Hermione! Oh, her- and to Looks me, that's like sociopathic. Yeah. Ten- right there he's that well okay so really quickly back with the tarot so hermione leaves and the guys ron and harry they get it they see it they're like okay you know i do see a black dog blah 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 and ron does the tea leaves and he's me and my husband say this all the time because we do first time he tries we read for ourselves and stuff and we always say you're gonna die but you're gonna be happy about it like i don't know how else to say that like you're gonna die but it's gonna be happy it's gonna be okay it's gonna be okay <laughs> so we always say that because it's just so true and like sometimes you do have to die and you're also like oh, okay i'm cool with it like whatever all right and um that does happen later on so we're gonna keep bringing that up and then you were saying her my okay so yes this is the introduction of fake news now fake news in Harry Potter it gets way worse in like the fifth and sixth book, but this is the very first time we saw it. And what Jenny was explaining was Rita Skeeter, the journalist, the she's known for being a gossip columnist, columnist. She's known for fudging the truth a little bit to make it seem more palpable to sell more daily profits. And she completely lied about the kids. Like just, they saw it, they hated her. And instead of dealing with it another way, Hermione catches this journalist in the journalist's um, shapeshifter form, which is a beetle. So the Rita Skeeter was an animagus. And at the very end of the fourth book, Hermione's like, okay, you guys, I've been keeping a secret. And she pulls out this like hostage journalist as a little beetle. She's like, I know how Rita Skeeter's been getting all of her info. And she like kept her for like six months or something like that. And she releases her and she tells her like, don't this again kind of thing. And um, yeah, it's interesting, <laughs> the fake news oh. aspect of this world and what we're dealing with in our world and the mm. fake news that you do see. Now, fun fact. I am born four days after Bella Swan. I'm born like the same year. Um, One day after Hermione and one day before Stephen King is like my birthday. So those, and it's always weird that there's Virgos in these. Yes. Queen Mary type stories or fairy tales type stories quick word on virgo and persephone we keep bringing up hecate because hecate is the goddess of witchcraft she's the first one who made it now persephone is going to be the oldest story if you ask me of human trafficking she was a daughter of demeter she was human trafficked by both hades and zeus like zeus stole her and gave her to the Hades underworld and he's like here you go here's a wife and she was like really young like really young so she's a Virgo and she never had children from what I well there's some stories saying she did but most stories said she didn't have any children so we have Virgo now Hecate who lives in the underworld with Hades she's not she sees what's going on and she's like yo 
you can't just take that young girl from the surface. So Hakate goes to the surface, finds Demeter, and says, hey, your kid was trafficked to hell. Um, let's grab all of our women and let's go get her back. So this is also the biggest deal it made in human trafficking as well because Hakate and her women go down to Hades and say and demand for Persephone to be taken back but all they could do was come up with this deal of okay you can have her for half the year so the idea is Virgo will go down to Hades September the night of September 20 20th to the 21st and then she will stay there until spring. So in Pisces, we see Virgo come back to the surface and she brings life with her. And when Virgo is in hell, there is nothing growing on the land. So this is how the Greek myths explained different seasons and stuff like that. She comes back and she brings the beautiful season of spring with her when she comes back so people like that persephone but the persephone that's going to hell the one that's suiting up she's crazy she's a crazy bitch so a lot of people in the greek myths of persephone once she's been doing her job for a while um they don't like her the people on the on the surface are scared of her because they're like she's from hell and the people in hell or the she only is with Hades in hell. He has problems because she's from the, like, she's not of either gladly place. welcomed wherever she is. But yeah. she's also the one that's bringing all the tools for it to happen. So they do show that with the Hermione type character. It is funny that she becomes the head of the ministry, though, because mm -hmm. that, that makes total sense. <laughs> that was wild. I know. So, um, yeah, and then the fourth book is just basically about, we have fake news with Rita Skeeter, then we have Manchurian candidates. Bribed, now. And now he's being blackmailed. He's a Manchurian candidate. That's why Crooked Joe is letting other countries walk all over the United States. He's now look up Trump talking about Manchurian candidates. He always does. He always says that person in politics is a Manchurian candidate. And what we see in the fourth book is this character mad eye moody who is like the best detective ever and if we're talking about magis he's like the top magi the aura yeah mm -hmm. he's an aura he is the magi like who the has put everyone away he yeah. comes to the school to watch over the kids and then sure enough that at the end they realize it was doctor who playing i was gonna say <laughs> i don't doctor know who locked him up <laughs> doctor who locked him up and um he was actually we never did actually see this mad eye moody character it was actually a man of uh, a manchurian candidate pretending to be uh Prof professor moody now the interesting thing on that one really quick is i have always said that mad i moody not the manchurian candidate version just the real version i am pretty sure that rowling this is the odin character he's missing an eye mm -hmm. and the eye he does have sees everything if you know the odin character this goes along with that also he's the top or odin himself when we were talking the last episode about shriners they when you go up to like what the shriners teach odin comes up a lot because he's the ultimate magi that is here to protect against the bad forces but we know odin gets taken over and turned into a mentoring candidate so she shows this happening in harry potter and um <sighs> he's teaching the little he's te he shows he does it to Longbottom, but it's not really Mad Eye Moody. It's, it's the really him. no it's the guy's son, a Death Eater, is really in there torturing. So, how do you sort the liars from the cheats? Because we're having to deal with this in real time right now. Yes, the it's basically like okay, Azkaban has all these criminals, but one of the curses can take over and make someone do something. That's the like I can make this spider dance control. but if you do it to human you can control the human so that's why mad eye says that's the rub how do you know who did the dark lord's bidding or who was made to do it under this curse we don't know 
like when you're in a state, a, a, a trial or a court of law, you don't know if the person actually did it or if they were a Manchurian candidate. And this is what F's up the entire like justice system of getting these people who worked with the bad guy. But we're going to have to deal with that soon because we have a client list and all these names on the client list. And you're like, OK, did Beyonce go to the island or did Sh Sasha Fierce go to the island? Because those are two different people. But you guys want to kill Beyonce when it was probably Sh Sasha Fierce. And this happens for everyone. They're all Manchurian candidates using bodies. So that's where we're going to leave off. <laughs> and I January 1st is coming it. very quick. <laughs> oh, yeah. We'll be here. I think it has something to do with light because I've always felt like uh, the times that we're living in now, they're going to be recorded for as long as men have tongues and hands and can speak and write and record information. We're going to be dissecting everything that we're going through right now. And I think because there will be a, an intensive investigative process in how to deal with these people. And you're exactly right. Some of these people were completely under mind control. How do you effectively, you know, deliver justice when these people were partially victims? And it's consistently something that, that I've kind of seen, whatever you want to call it, intuited that there is a some kind of a light, we could call it plasmic, plasmic light that they use to sort of peer through these people. And it's like the equivalent of a lie detector test, but it's using light and plasmic fields to determine where, you know, what this person is really composed of, whether or not they're going to do it again, whether or not they're really sorry. You know what I mean? Like this is going to redefine our entire justice system and how we like determine, you know, people's intentions and like how serious it all is. But it, I think it like just to tie into our whole to topic of plasma here, there's light going to be used to like figure out who did what and why. That would be fun. Uh, and they must have figured it out if they're going to release us the list then, because it's been so many years now of them. It's been, oh. people don't realize how long it's been, Alexis. You're totally right. Like, um, my husband was a part of the National Guard, and right when he was getting out, that deployment, they were all going to Guantanamo Bay to make it bigger. And oh, it was his right. unit who went to Guantanamo Bay and built it. It was left in shambles. It looked like horrible, like a shack. And then if you look at the screenshots, like satellite version of Guantanamo Bay now, prisoner of Azkaban. Azkaban is a jail in the middle of the ocean. So the worst criminals the world can't leave. We have one of those. It is called Guantanamo Bay. It is in Cuba, which is weird, but <laughs> it is our Azkaban and it has been widened and corridors were added and a lot of money went into it. So I'm excited to see what happens. We'll see. Yes. So we did bring up the Caribbean already. So then we circled back to the Caribbean again yeah, with that. Back to the Caribbean. And the prisoner of As or the Azkaban jail is potentially that in our reality. And then mm -hmm. in my opinion, the jail was also in a way a metaphor as well, because the the witch, witches and wizards who use these unforgivable curses, they get sentenced to go there. And it's like in a way, when you use these curses, you've corrupted your soul for the first time as a witch or wizard and you're a danger because you've seen that level of power and you've corrupted yourself so you can do it again much easier the second time and third time whatever so it's in my opinion i was like is this a physical place or is this more like discussing how like people drop in the astral plane even and they're like trapped being demented on and like fed off of in this prison of their own decisions you know and the magical it's just like the magical world's dumped you there because you put Ooh. yourself there physically in a way and i was like okay I, I was pondering that idea as like the big symbol for book three as that, man, so the structure itself is a massive triangle oh yes triangle mm. structure out in the middle of the ocean right yeah like the idea of water and the triangle it does kind of it, it could indicate almost like a, a vortex or a portal where you are locked into an astral realm of like, now you got to deal with your mistakes. Like this is what you get. And you did it yourself. You did it to yourself unless you're serious black and you were set up. <laughs> you know what okay. I mean? So on that yeah, same wow. line of thinking, who watched over these people in Azkaban? Who was the guards? The Dementors. So if you have parasites in your stomach, in your column, in your because that's where it is. Oh, God, I didn't even cover that. Okay. Toxoplasmosis Gandhi is 
the parasite I try to kill with everyone. It's the one I'm having trouble again with here. It's, it's a bugger to kill. Why is it a bugger to kill? Because it's not a squishy little bug. It is plasma toxoplasmosis wow. gondii. It's a plasma parasite. That's why it is a blood parasite. That's why, yeah, I care that you kill all the gross bugs in your stomach, but I'm really trying to get people to get these blood parasites out and they're all plasma parasites. They're not yes. like a little squirmy bug. So it's really interesting how that works. So if these people are in their own Azkaban, in their own bodies, you remove the Dementors with Thinking of Light. And that's how Sirius Black escaped Azkaban because he's like, I'm not here it's I'm not tormented of something I did. I'm true. I know the truth. So the Dementors never saw him escape. That's how he escaped Azkaban to begin with. His, yes. He I elevated out of it. Uh, <laughs> and the three points, again, a triangle. I didn't even think about that. But it's held in by the three curses, in a way, the three points. And then there's the three, the good things, too. The three good yeah. things, which are like the... So that was interesting. That triangle just keeps showing up. <laughs> yeah, it has to be done in thirds. Three, six, nine. Yes. Three, six, nine. So, yeah. <gasps> the third book so with, I know, it's just all these characters. And one other thing that was a symbol that I see a lot and stuff is the blue bird all the time. I follow mm -hmm. that one. And in the beginning of this film, the blue bird is a part of that in a way it kind of comes in. Mm -hmm. It's a weird little initiatory part of the film especially and then the whomping willow ends up like flicking it away it pops it like it, it i'm pretty sure it kills it but it's kind of leaves it i don't know in the book i think they do say it like it killed it or something but they mention it in the book do they not this bird yeah but i didn't even think about it but blue birds are i mean anyone who knows the avalon story um and then Twitter. I always laughed right. at the blue bird was bluebird. Twitter, and they just they X'd it out. They killed the blue bird, and oh my God. yeah, it's no longer tweet. It's it stopped tweeting. When do birds sing? You it cut uh, like it goes deep. The blue bird is like um yeah we'll we'll cover that one more and then huge yeah I, I see it everywhere. Um my husband's gonna laugh because we love um. The video game with the cowboys in the wild wild west red dead redemption red dead. and every time that main character is doing something and he gets a disease whatever and but when he's doing something there's a little blue bird that's next to him singing so when he's building his house there's a little blue bird that's following him the whole time and it's like a spirit thing it's really weird yeah wow. that's really good. Weird. i'm glad i pointed to that one thank you little tiny but I'll, I just want to say, like, just making sure I hit all the things because yes, it was just so brilliant. Like, we they brought in Hogsmeade, so they're mm -hmm. able to take these students off campus, like, to go enjoy themselves and kind of be children for the first, or like young adults for the first time, which was interesting. And the Marauders map they brought in with the twins, they brought mm -hmm. they initiated him into that, like, literally saying that, that you're so up to no down. good as like your intention with this item. So it was interesting, like this this gray zone item that helped so much, but in a way it was mm -hmm. meant for no good or mischief. Mischief, yes. Which is mischief. mischief. And then they manage their mischief and they're done with the map, which I thought was cool. And again, it kind of, I like how they looked at like the actual issues of the children at the time and what they would actually be developing in as young people anyways. Like apart from the magical world, you're still like a human being that yeah. is like <laughs> looking for a girlfriend or a boyfriend or a ch like to have your human moments. So I'm glad they brought that in and kept that in, especially with the third and fourth movie. And then watching the, the actors talk about it, they reminisce about, yes, that was really happening for them at that time too. And they're filming and the mixing of the schools and the Goblet of Fire, like all, all of these extra characters and these extra symbols coming in just like to add to the I would say the complexity of the magical world and how French students go to a different school and like the, uh, mm -hmm. what was the other the other school um it was the Dungstring Dungstring and there were from it was from Bulgaria from Bulgaria Bulgaria yeah I don't and know. The, it was a fun one though Bulgaria yeah that's and then there yeah, is an American one. They talk about the American school Ivory, 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 um, interesting. In 
Fantastic Beast and Where to Find Him. It's that's in America in the 1920s. So wow. it shows the Magi in America and the Nomad in America during that time and the fake witch hunts, which look up Trump talking about witch hunts. Yeah. It's it's crazy. So um they do talk Ivermore. Ivermore is America's oh, that version. Familiar. Yeah, and that's where we would have gotten our receipts or letters uh we wouldn't have gone to hogwarts but there's this whole thing in hogwarts lore that if you look at the time frames all the harry potter stuff happened in like the mid 90s mm -hmm. so when people who were turning of age from 98 to whatever which is when we all would have been turning that magic 10 11 number um I would have turned 11 in 2001. So it's like, oh, okay. We wouldn't have gotten our letters because the Dark Lord, he put a, he wouldn't send um, muggle, even half breeds. He wouldn't send them letters to go to the school. So there was a 10 year diff, a 10 year gap in the Harry Potter episodes, which would have been our age group where we didn't receive letters because we were muggle. Yeah, it's a whole thing. Mud floods. Mud. So after the towers fell, there was no letters in ten years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Just as soon as the towers falling, it goes wonky. Mm -hmm. Oh my bad. <laughs> well, we we were there, so <laughs> we all saw Sorry. it. It happened. Uh, but I think there yeah. was illusionary magic with that sacrifice Tons. in itself. So, which was interesting. Mm -hmm. We learned all about it, like the capat, and they like flex the muscles of like. But thankfully, as kids, we weren't expected to get to the bottom of it during that time. <laughs> Little did they know, let yeah, we would. Carriers, give us 10, 20, 30 years. We're going to get to the bottom of that shit. We'll find yeah. out. It's no big we'll deal. We'll find out. Some of the fun little bits, too, that I wanted to mention was the Minister of Magic does step in some, in some, uh, some horse droppings in Hogsmeade while they're having a right before they're having a conversation they subtly have him walk he gets pushed back he walks over it and then he gets pushed back into the horse poop which was really funny I yeah. loved that little scene so that was fun for the ministry moment and I just loved when that Dumbledore decided to have a cup of tea or a large glass of brandy after oh. they were potentially killing this hippogriff that got saved yeah, thankfully right. with the time turner genius little children so that was nice love that time turner it's like such a good little ditty yeah the time turner really would have helped out a couple of times in the series maybe we should just like hold on to the time turner but no whatever <laughs> and then yeah we kind of moved through the fourth book like really fast but the maybe they are book. working with time turners though sorry exactly and the third book there isn't a lot of Voldemort energy except for like that he's like weak and like do telling other people to do his bidding and then fourth book he arrives fully he's reborn so it's yeah. like oh, such a huge difference with like you get a, such a break I would feel I feel like we got such a break from that energy in the third um third book or third movie in my opinion and then it just hits you so hard like the hardest they can hit you with it in the fourth so it's such a huge shift and they like oh there's just so much uh we could go into and i'm sure we're going to bring up more of the like the fourth book as we continue doing the next episodes yeah. which i love but um uh what else did i want to say it was just Bringing in also the Quidditch World Cup is in the beginning as well. And the Huge. Portuguese was really interesting. Ah. Yeah, that helped a lot. Like, it was so nice to see them get to have fun and play amongst, like, the wizarding community. And then, like, it all burns to the ground because they can't protect themselves from, like, a gang of, like, five Death Eaters. And it was just, to me, when I saw that, I was like, this is so pathetic. Like, the wizarding world is a joke. Like, can you guys adult witches and wizards everybody has a wand and everybody just flees like nobody knows how to get into formation nobody has any defensive tactics like what is this is this a blue state it's like a blue state behavior no yeah. i wanted to bring that up and i texted alexis so me and my husband were invited <laughs> to go watch nascar and oh, i've nice. never seen nascar like i've always wanted to I have no idea about it i was just like you know what i want to go see nascar and here in arizona we have a beautiful like one of the races tracks it's like overlooking the valley there's like mountains it's gorgeous so i was like you know what fine let's go see nascar we went to go see it the way they tailgate when you 
get to the NASCAR place, it looks like the World Cup. Me and my husband were like, yeah. oh, my God, because they have um, RVs everywhere. And the RVs say, like, conspiracy theorists, and it has just a bunch of tallies and, like, experts, and it has zero tallies. Like, oh, no. it's like the red state version of the Quidditch World Cup. And if any kind of shenanigans uh, is going to go down, they have our version of wands. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> so, Over. We, Ameri and I keep saying that Americans would handle this so much better because of the Second Amendment. And I'm going to beat it like a dead horse. We're allowed to learn the curses, like the yeah. curses that they're, oh, the, we don't talk about those unforgivable things. No, Americans are allowed to. You are allowed to take a life. It is called the Second Amendment. So fuck around and find out. It's also one of the principles of hermetics. Like we mm -hmm. can protect ourselves. And a lot of the Hogwarts okay. stuff like wouldn't happen in America. That's why yeah. it had to happen in the UK. I mean, the British, like that, that happened in Britain. If that happened in America, it would have been, it's the wild, wild west here. We handle our problems a little bit differently. And that's why they're still under, I mean, arguably we're still under the church and crown yeah. rule as well, but they're like really under the boot. So, mm -hmm. you know, but I was thinking about that too. It's like they attack the entire stadium and, and thousands of adult witches and wizards just sort of like stood there, like freeze, it's like uh, somebody do something. We did see that in real life though with 2020, we saw people turn against us real quick. I yeah. lost so many friends and that's why we, 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 the people we met after 2020 and during that time, our bonds are so strong because we, the closest people next to us shunned us yeah. because it wasn't popular because this fake news Rita Skeeter was yeah. making up lies and they believed it. And you do see this happen in Harry Potter more in the next books um, because you do have the kids going, hating on Harry going, my mom didn't want me to come to Hogwarts this year. And I get it. I get it. And it's like, it sucks. It sucks. Yeah. Yes. Okay, girls. Uh, Alexis, do you have any more notes for this one? We can that always was come back and circle back. No, I thank you so much for letting me bring those to you, ladies, and get your feedback on it because I've just learned so much from doing these already with you. And I'm just so grateful that we can have fun and enjoy this. And I know we're talking about heavy stuff, but we haven't lived to this part of our life without having to embrace the heavy stuff. And it is not something a little girl or you know, women tend to want to have to do. But mm -hmm. we will clean up the mess and we will show and share for the immunity of everyone because this is that the motherly energy. So I'm glad that we could do that. We can display that and be brave. So thank, thank you. you for being brave with me, girls. Love you. Love you guys. Thank you. All right. Next week, we'll cover the fifth and sixth book for uh, the new year. I'm really excited. So thank you guys so much Yay. for joining me. And we will be seeing you in a new year. Adios. Yes. Bye.